Oh, what did you uh, what did you grab at the store? Thank you for asking. It is the Sony ZV-E10, and I could not think of a better APS-C for my needs. The ZV-E what? Literally, think about a camera that has a 13-hour record time for video podcasts, 4K resolution, flip-out screen, USB streaming without a capture card, interchangeable lenses, 120 FPS, slow motion, pairs perfectly with the RS3 Mini. It's just a small camera. No, babe, it is literally so much more than that. It is like the Sony a7 had a baby with the more recent lineup of cameras and poof, the ZV-E10, let's get into it. Hop in the car, watch it go vroom, vroom. I told them all that I was soon, soon. No, as a child, back in the womb. Oh. Are you looking for the best mirrorless camera for YouTube videos in 2023? If so, stick around. I'm gonna spill the tea. This video is being recorded on the Sony ZV-E10. It is an APS-C camera released by Sony in 2022. I believe Sony's primary objective in releasing this video camera specifically was for vlogging, but I have known it to be so much more capable than just that. Now, let me rewind a little bit. If you're just getting into content creation, maybe you wanna create some TikToks, maybe you're a new YouTuber, maybe you don't know what APS-C means, and that's totally okay. An APS-C refers to the size of the sensor within the mirror of this camera itself. So you have DSLRs, which use a series of like uh, mirrors bouncing off of each other. It's a pretty complicated system to make the camera itself work. Then there's a mirrorless camera, which goes off of a little bit of a different system. Let me say it in the words of Google verbatim. Mirrorless camera technology has removed all of the mirror design components, instead using an electronic imaging sensor to do the same job. Light passes through the lens directly onto the digital sensor displaying your image on the camera's screen. Now, what that essentially means is when it comes to mirrorless cameras, there's the APS-Cs and then there's the full frame cameras. The only difference is, is that the APS-Cs have a sensor that's slightly cropped. It's a little bit smaller than a full frame camera sensor. The biggest downside to that is one, it's cropped, and two, it's not going to do quite as well in a low light environment because there's just not enough space on that sensor to let in a bunch of light. But if you're just a content creator, you're getting into the YouTube world, you don't see a need for a mirrorless camera quite yet, there is still so much use in having an APS-C camera. Now in this review, I'm primarily going to be going over the modes in the camera, as well as what I think of the button layout, as well as a few things that you should probably take note of if you're looking into getting this camera and using it long-term. I really want to get into why I think this is the perfect camera for someone that is just starting a YouTube channel and wanting to get into content creation. Now, Sony does have quite a few other cameras in the mirrorless camera line under the ZV series, but in my opinion, you do kind of pigeonhole yourself as far as the features that you're able to get with those things, whether it's, you know, lens interchangeability, Bluetooth, a whole bunch of other things that I thought were really important when I was looking to get into the space of mirrorless cameras. And I did not want to, um, I guess, kick my own ankles in when I wanted to upgrade it or add something to the camera in the future because I didn't pay the money up front to get something that's going to be a very good foundation for me initially. Now, if you are a YouTuber looking to get into a mirrorless camera, you've also got to keep in mind that depending on your industry, depending on your niche, your needs are going to be very much different than mine. You may need a completely different camera based off of the content that you're filming. When I started looking for a mirrorless camera, I had a very specific list of things that I was looking to get in a camera and I was not willing to negotiate on those things. Now, the first one of those reasons is lens interchangeability is a huge deal for me. If I wanted to go, you know, either do something for a client, film a YouTube video, do a TikTok, anything like that, and I wanted some tight macro shots, I wanted to be able to unscrew my lens, put on a different lens that allowed those macro shots. Maybe I want a lot wide lens. Maybe I want one that, you know, zooms in really far. You don't get that when you go with some of the earlier ZV predecessors in the ZV line from Sony. Now, the next thing that was a tremendous deal to me was I did not want a record limit on the camera that I ended up purchasing. If you're someone that likes to film a lot of long form content or you're, you know, wanting to get into video podcasting, I can see that that's very much trending right now. The last thing that you're going to want to worry about is if your camera has a 28, 30 minute record limit, because that means that you're going to have to cut off your podcast right about that 25, 28 minute mark, go over to your camera, stop it from recording, then restart it so it can film at the next half hour long segment 
for your video podcast or longer video that you're doing. No one wants to worry about that. No one's got time for that. Come on. Ain't nobody got time for that. So that being said, the Sony ZV-E10 does have a 13 hour record limit. I don't know who in their right mind would even record for that long, but it's nice to know in the back of my head that I don't have to get up and restart it. Now the next thing that was a huge deal to me was I needed something with a flip out screen. I was using the iPhone 13 to film my content previously. And the big con to that is that it's got the primary camera on the front, which everyone knows like isn't the best lens in the world, isn't the best like method of recording in the world. Then there's the back camera, which is actually pretty good, but you then don't have access to your screen. So you're either gonna use one of those like vlog selfie mirrors that you put into like a cold shoe and that way you can like kind of see yourself or you get someone else to frame it up for you, which like you don't want to bother people every time you want to like film a TikTok. I do not have time for this. I do not have time for you. Like, hey, am I in frame or not? So the ZV-E10 has a flip out screen that allows it to go either way. So now whether it's vertical, horizontal, whatever it is right now, I can look at the vertical screen to the side of this and make sure that I am framed up. That is huge. Sometimes they say huge. Now, something that was an absolute non-negotiable for me was I needed a mirrorless camera with a solid ability to have Bluetooth so that I could speak to and communicate properly with modern day gimbals, such as the DJI RS3 Mini that I typically use with this camera. If it didn't have the Bluetooth capability, you are then stuck with wires. And if you're out filming adventures, you know, out in the glorious outdoors and you're running past trees and branches and objects and different things, the last thing you wanna have, like, have to worry about is wires plugged in and potentially getting yanked out by a branch as you're running past or you know wires shorting out things not being plugged in all the way things becoming unplugged forgetting to plug things in you, you see where i'm going with this it is a myriad of different things that you should not have to worry about anything that gets in between you and creativity is an issue now something that was very attractive to me about the cve 10 is that it allows you to use the camera as a webcam as long as it has a usb-c plugged directly into the laptop or whatever device you're trying to stream from i saw a bunch of streamers on tiktok that were using it and i was like what usually you have to like tip yourself upside down, close one eye, get a capture card, some other fancy piece of equipment, find some roundabout way to like use a, a mirrorless camera as a webcam. And I was always like tinkering with different ways to try and make older ones work. This one works right out of the box with a USB-C camera. It is huge. You're not gonna be that rookie that's in like your Zoom meeting or your video podcast shooting in like 720p uh, with the dinosaurs. Now the next thing that was a really big deal to me was I wanted top notch resolution out of a camera that wasn't considered, you know, a cinema camera that are thousands of dollars. This camera is capable of shooting at 4K 60 and 1080p up to 60 frames per second. For those of you that aren't maybe the most familiar with what frames per second means, that's totally okay. It essentially means that this camera can film buttery smooth action sequences without being choppy and like looking like your talent or whatever your subject is, is doing this constantly. It, it's great. Now I needed something with decent, and when I say decent, I mean not very decent, but it's not trash either, stock microphone on the ZV-E10. Currently what you're hearing is the DJI mic that I've got plugged directly under the top because it does have a port for that. But the stock sound, the stock microphone on the ZV-E10, it, it isn't garbage, but it's not great either. So you should replace that. Now to have all of this capability, in one camera is a tall order, especially if you're looking to get into a mirrorless camera that is less than $1,000. And that is where the ZV-E10, in my opinion, kicks any other camera in the teeth. It checks all the boxes. It does all the things I needed it to do. Now there are brands with similar offerings, but I do like the button layout and the general aesthetic of the Sony cameras better. Canon has a few different offerings that um, I believe are pretty similar, but I am just a fan of Sony. Now the button layout on the ZV-E10 is incredibly intuitive. Everything is really quick to get to. I especially love how it has an S and Q mode for slow motion. So you can flip between shooting in normal speed and slow motion with one friggin' button. I come from the drone world where that's like unheard of. Um, if I tried to change like my, my DJI FPV back when I had that to slow motion, that's like something I had to tamper with in the goggles. I'm not sure how easy it is with other cameras, but I love that I can do that switch over with one button. Now I have been using this camera pretty consistently, really beating on it, really putting it to the test. <laughs> I've actually only owned it for a few weeks, but doing freelance videography, I have used it with probably 10 plus clients at this point, um, every other day filming for hours. 
And that actually brings me into some of the things that you should be aware of if you are a buyer considering getting into the Sony ZV-E10. Here's a few things that you should probably keep in mind. Number one, this camera does get warm after about an hour and a half of filming. It's not like warm to the point where you can no longer control the camera and it's just like hot to the touch and it's gonna break. It's just a moderate amount of temperature increase from what it was. And it's, it's noticeable, but I don't think that it's detrimental. It's just something you should notate. Now the next and probably one of the most annoying things with this camera is that the facial focus tracking on this camera gets disabled if you like basically breathe on it wrong. I actually watched a video from the podcast Meister. I will go ahead and put a link to his channel below. He has a ton of great information on his channel. I watched it because I was like filming a talking headshot earlier and it was focused on my like on air sign for the whole 20 minute clip. And I was like, what the crap is going on? It's because I had product showcase mode enabled. He's actually got a list that he was able to kind of pull out that enlightens us as users as to when the facial tracking is going to turn off if any of these features are enabled. Sony, if you ever see this, did you ever think that maybe we would want facial tracking when we're using slow motion or PC remote or any of these like fundamental crazy important features? Sony, come on, you're better than that. Now the next thing that's more just an annoyance for me is the fact that this camera is not the most weatherproof thing in the world. If you're filming YouTube content, freelance content, TikTok, anything like that, in the great outdoors, this thing is pretty susceptible to the weather and water getting into it. I wish that they um, what, like, weatherproofed it up a little bit more so that you could have a little bit more flexibility of where you filmed with this camera. In conclusion, and my genuine opinion, I do think that this is a fantastic camera if you're looking for all the same things that I was looking for in a mirrorless camera but don't want to drop over a thousand dollars. This thing comes in at right about the $800 price point with the kit lens that you're seeing right now is the 16 to 50 millimeter lens or for 700, I believe you can get it with just the body and that is a fantastic choice as well. Now, if you guys would like a separate video talking about how well this camera talks and communicates with the DJI RS3 mini, I may release one anyway, but please let me know if you guys um, would like that and I'll go ahead and create a video there as well. Until then, stay creative, go mess with some gear, go fall on your face, learn some lessons, and more importantly, stay passionate about what you're doing and stay safe.